What we want to do now is switch back to the drama that's playing out in a Fairfax County, Virginia courtroom between ex-spouses and actors Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Day 19 of the trial resumed today with Heard's team playing videotape depositions from Johnny Depp's former friend and brother-in-law and the actor's former agent. Let's go back into court together now. Some questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I've read it. Okay. So, directing your attention to exhibit number 11. So, uh, I'll, because there's a number of these, so maybe we can just clear it up right from the start. So, we have conversation. If you look at the top, conversation. Six messages, three parties, over 209 minutes. And it has this first one. It has a date and a time, and it has a telephone number. Do you see that? I do. Okay. And then it has some email messages, they're text messages. It looks like it starts with Keith Bishop. Do you know who Keith Bishop is? I do. And who is he? Keith Bishop is a, a publicist who lives in London. And for what? Uh, what uh, publication? Oh no, he's a he's a he's a he's a publicist. He's an advisor on media. I see. Did you at any time? Did you or um, Mr. Depp ever employ Keith Bishop in any kind of uh, public relations role? Yeah. Mr. Waldman, I would instruct you not to answer any. Um, I would instruct you not to answer the question to the extent that it would require you to disclose any communications you had with with Johnny, either receiving or, or giving. I would not be able to answer without doing so, so I, I accept the instruction. Okay, and then Mr. Bishop says, and this is on 128-2020, Adam, I can confirm a meeting with the mail online for Monday, 17 February, 10 a.m. You see that? I do. So did you in fact have a meeting with the, the mail online on 17 February? I, I couldn't say sitting here now definitively that we met on Monday the 17th of February, no. But uh, I see this and it, it wouldn't surprise me if we had. And, and was Mr. Depp with you when you had the meeting? I believe Mr. Depp was with me when we had this meeting. And you were representing Mr. Depp at the time, correct? I, I would instruct the witness not to answer that question um, based on attorney-client privilege. I accept the instruction. When did you obtain the audio tape that you're referencing in this text message? And I would instruct you not to answer the question to the extent it would require you to disclose any communications you had with Mr. Depp, your client. It, it would, and so I won't be able to answer the question. What tape did you provide to the mail online, the Daily Mail? In this, are you asking, forgive me, in this instance relating to this text? Yes. Uh, my recollection is that I gave a pair of audio tapes actually to them. Whether that occurred sequentially or at the same time, I don't remember, but I provided them two tapes. What training have you had in domestic violence? None. Have you ever represented any clients 
who have either been accused of domestic violence or or had domestic violence committed on them other than Mr. Depp? No. And of course, you hadn't, you never saw any, as we would say, element or elements of things that Ms. Hurd claimed, right? I never saw any element or elements of things she claimed. Um, do you mean, did I ever see evidence with my own eyes that something she was saying was false? Yes. Yes, to some extent I have seen evidence of things that show her statements to be false. Before we get there, as best you can recall today, who are the eyewitnesses that you, um, among the 29 or so that you referred to in the text of Christian Carino, that you believe disprove Ms. Hurd's claims of abuse by Johnny Depp? Okay, good. Um, it's, it's, it's also probably easier to answer by taking a, a particular incident rather than just thinking of, of names of people. So um, maybe this is a good illustration that, that, that is a helpful answer. Um, on May 21st, 2016, and I, I always view this as one of her central claims. It was the one she put on the cover of People magazine. Uh, it's the one she led with when she went to get her temporary restraining order. Um, the phone to the face incident on May 21st, 2016. That's her claim and that she was beaten further beaten by some appendage of Mr. Depp in the face uh, and her hair was pulled um, and she showed up on the 27th in court with a lot of uh, bruises on her face. So there are two police officers, one domestic violence trained female police officer who've testified over and over and over that there was no damage to the uh, penthouse which Ms. Heard uh, claimed was destroyed. That's a direct quote, destroyed. Um, there, uh, there are, that I can think of, nine other witnesses, um, the majority of whom uh, are either neutral or actually well, Ms. Hurd's own witnesses, who have testified in various forms, um, various times, that uh, there were no injuries to her face whatsoever between the 21st uh, and the 27th, when suddenly there were bruises. Um, were those nine? Let's see. Um, Laura Divinier, um, um, Melanie and Glacey, um, Amber's own uh, uh, primary makeup artist. Um, Laura Divinier was Ms. Hurd's assistant and decorator uh, and now works for Elon Musk. Um, Hilda Vargas, um, Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's at the time housekeeper. Um, Samantha McMillan, who was Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp's uh, stylist, and a good friend of Ms. Hurd. Um, Isaac Baruch, uh, Ms. Hurd's and Mr. Depp's friend, close friend, and uh, Ms. Hurd's neighbor in the penthouses. Okay, uh, so continuing on, uh, the, the witnesses, a list of some witnesses to the 21st, to her claims of, of, of violence and damage to the apartment. Um, um, Trinity Esparza, who was the head of the concierge desk at the Eastern Columbia building, um, and a friend of Ms. Hurd's also. Uh, Cornelius Harrell, uh, who I think also worked for the concierge desk or in any event worked for the Eastern Columbia building and met with Ms. Hurd on the 22nd uh, of May, uh, which meeting was captured on CCTV also. Um, uh, Alejandro Romero, who I believe is head of security at the Eastern Columbia building. Um, and I think Brandon Patterson also testified about the uh, absence of, of bruises. And I should, I should even distinguish, because we're talking about the notion of a hoax, I should distinguish these people uh, specifically have given testimony that she was, Ms. Heard was uninjured between the 21st uh, of May 
uh, up into perhaps the 25th or 26th of May. And then, of course, she appeared bruised again on the 27th. Some of them have testified that even after the 27th, they were with her and she appeared uh, and that she appeared bruised. But during that period between the 21st and the 27th, I, I'm not sure if I've listed nine plus the two police officers, um, but I think that's that's an illustration of what I was referring to um, when I when I, in the question you uh, uh, asked me about. Can you please pull up um, the document labeled ARW 660, please? So oh. sorry, but you do believe that the pictures and videos Marilyn Manson sent you helped disprove Ms. Hurd's allegations, correct? As to that, as to that incident, uh, Thanksgiving, perhaps 2013, I think those, I think those videos uh, and photographs, yes, demolished her claim. Have you communicated with other social media um, users about this case other than public messaging platforms? Let me, let me ask that differently. Have you communicated privately with other social media users about this case? Um, other social media, I want to make sure I'm precise. Other social media users? Yes. Uh, that would, that would include. That group would include. All right, we need to hit a break, so we're going to hit the pause button. You won't miss any of this. Uh, we seem to be getting somewhere. I know it's very frustrating uh, with that attorney advising him not to answer much, uh, but he had a lot to say uh, when he was asked whether or not he saw anything uh, that would potentially disprove the allegations Yimmer Heard's bringing forth. We'll be right back with more Court TV Live after this. MDBeauty.com. Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Julie Grant. Thank you for being with us. So if you're just now joining us, we're in Depp versus Heard in Virginia. Let me set the scene for you. Attorney Adam Waldman is testifying via videotape deposition. Uh, this is someone that the Heard team is offering his testimony into this case to substantiate the allegations that Amber Heard made in her counterclaim. She is saying that this attorney who represented Johnny Depp made statements about her that were false. And if it can be established that he made them at the direction of Johnny Depp, then they might have something there. But as we saw, this attorney has an attorney representing him, and he is telling him not to answer anything that would implicate, implicate him or Johnny Depp in any way. Let's go back in now, where we pause the video. Almost everybody on earth. Have you provided information about this case to other social media personalities who then post that information? Um... I've provided information episodically to what I would what I would call internet journalists, and I'll define that as journalists who are not affiliated with. You mentioned, I think, NBC a moment ago, or, or a, you know, a, a mainstream media outlet. Have you communicated with um, a social media user who goes by the name that umbrella guy? Um, I've had several phone calls. With a, with a person who goes by the name that umbrella guy. I don't actually know his real name. Um, have you communicated with him other than through phone calls? Um, I don't remember doing so, no. Um, what are other... Well, let me ask you this. Do you, have you communicated in a similar fashion with someone on social media who goes by the name that Brian fella? Yes. Um, what about someone who goes by the name the real Laura B? Yes. And have you communicated to those individuals listed um, evidence that you believe suggests that Miss Heard's allegations are hoaxes? Um. I would say I communicate with the internet journalists because we put them in a category calling them that. I, I've done that exactly the same way I would communicate with mainstream media. Um, if they have questions about evidence or the facts, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll inform them. 
And have you, in, when you communicate with them, do you do so, you testified some by phone, correct? Yes. Do you do so by text or messenger platform? Largely, I think by phone, but if I, if I communicated in writing, it would be probably by signal. Can you please pull up uh, the exhibit um, ALH 17001 to 2, please? Turn on the screen, exhibit 24. No, my question, well, my first question is, um, is that in that box where it says first on the record statement um, from me regarding the body cam to RTL, Adam Waldman, Johnny Depp's attorney, is that, um, is that a statement that you made to um, a German media outlet called RTL? Yes. And in that statement, you say that LAPD have now opened up a criminal investigation into perjury of Ms. Hurd, correct? Yes. Did you, um, did, you, did you make a correction to RTL when you learned that the LAPD wasn't in fact investigating uh, Ms. Hurd for perjury? Well, the way you've characterized it is not exactly what I would agree with. The LAPD told me that they were uh, investigating the, uh, the perjury claim at that time. Then sequentially came the statement, then came notification from the LAPD that it was actually the LA Sheriff's Department that was investigating it, and that was the last I heard about it. And who notified you from the LAPD that it was allegedly the Sheriff's Department who was investigating it? The same, uh, the same desk officer at Fodil. And when I say he's the desk officer, I, I don't know if that's not necessarily the job title. How did you find his, um, do you have his contact information? Uh, I don't think I do. I don't know, but I don't, well, I, I'm not sure. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I asked you this. Um, how did you come into contact with this desk officer? I brought a binder of information, um, including the um, statements that had been made um, and the evidence showing that those statements were false. In your view. So you, you took a binder to the LAPD and spoke to this desk officer? Correct. And was that the only time that you spoke to this person? The two times. Were they both in person? Oh, well, maybe it's three, it's two or three times. No, um, no, two times we're on the phone. Was the first meeting in person when you brought this binder? No, the first was on the telephone. So the, the investigation was opened up at your request <laughs> after you brought this binder? To the desk officer, is that no, right? I didn't ask him. I didn't ask him to open an investigation. I filed a claim uh, with the LAPD um, regarding these perjurious statements that Ms. Heard and her best friend Rocky Pennington had made uh, to a court. Was that claim that you filed in writing? Yes. Do you know whether that claim was produced as part of this, your document production in this case? Because I certainly haven't seen it. I don't know that I ever received a copy of it. It was filed in writing with the LAPD. Um, but I don't, I don't recall that I ever received a copy of it. Did you draft it? No. So what was, you were talking to the desk officer and he was taking down notes and that, is that the writing you're referring to? Yes. Did you ever see this alleged written claim? Yes. Did you sign it? I don't recall if I did. Did you ever speak to anyone other than your client about this alleged perjury investigation? other than your client and the desk officer? Well, I think this quote that you've, that you've shown me to the media 
would would constitute speaking about it. Did you ever hear anything more about this perjury investigation um, to the extent it existed um, from anyone, any other third party who claimed that they had spoken to anyone in LAPD or the LA Sheriff's Office? No, I don't think so. Mr. Waldman, uh, do you have a professional license? I do. Do you have your own law firm? I do. What is the name of your law firm? Endeavor Law Firm. When was Endeavor Law Firm formed? Um, I think it was in 2005. And who was it who formed uh, your law firm? Uh, it was I who did it. And who owns your law firm? I do. What is your title at the Endeavor Law Firm? Um, managing member, I believe. And it's, it's none of our business who your clients are, but does the Endeavor Law Firm have other clients other than Mr. Depp? Yes. Does Johnny Depp issue you a Form W-2? I don't think so, no. Do you receive legal training from Johnny Depp or any of your other clients? I suppose the practice of law in general is legal training, but if I understand your question correctly, no. Fair, fair point. Uh, have you ever listed Johnny Depp as your employer on any filings with the IRS? No. But you offer legal services to clients, correct? Yes. All right, I'll say, do you offer legal services to uh, the general public? Probably not to the general public, but I offer legal services. I think that's your question. All right. 